Alan, we're back on. With respect, Councillor, I think our listeners will be more concerned about cuts to public services. It, well, absolutely, Terry, and that's why we've set out proposals Terry, to ensure... let me take it from here, throw me the ball. Councillor, you talk a good game. I caught it, by the way. Um, but I have figures that show that you plan to cut public spending. Are you talking about the raw figures or the figures adjusted for inflation? Yes. Well, the, the first or the second? The, the, the first, the first, the first, the first, right, the first, well, I'd say. Well, in that case, that that's wrong, because if you right. look at the figures, the actual spend has remained the same as last year, see? Yeah. No, I understand it. I'm just, mm. uh, just checking it. Well, it's there. Yeah, that's fine. The, uh, another area where we've seen a, a great deal of public anger is in council housing. Mm. Now, mm. what is the proposal here? I, I mean, meant the second. Sorry, I meant the se I meant the second one. What, when, you, when you gave me the choice before, I meant the I meant the, the second choice choice where the figures are adjusted for inflection. Well, Alan, we've made no secret of the fact that we're not going to keep pace with inflation. In fact, it's inflation. one of the few issues that we have cross-party agreement on, so... Um, right. We've made no secret of the fact that we're bus, going bus, to have bus, to make... Bus fares! I'm sorry? Bus fares. Have you not put up bus fares? As we said in our manifesto, we won't be putting up bus fares in any... Ha have you put up bus fares? Not in real terms. Have you put up bus fares? In line with inflation, we have had to keep pace... Yes or in... no? Have you put up bus fares? In our manifesto... Have you... Stay... Have you... Have you put up bus fares? We've only put up bus fares. Have you put up bus fares? Yes, but only yes, in but as much... Yes, but you, yes, but you, yes, but yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. If you want to see that interview back online and see me getting a politician to admit something slightly different from what they said earlier and then no, saying, look, you said something slightly different not from actually. what you said earlier. No, and uh, and uh, so, one nil. It's 10am. It's just after 10am. You have been listening to Alan Partridge with special guest Tory Bronwyn, Matthews... Who's Tory, Tory Councillor Bronwyn Matthews. Yeah, her, and what's your name? Terry Cohen. Terry Cohen. Uh, get well soon uh, to uh, Eddie Shadow. Shepherd. Uh, who I'm sure will get well uh, very soon. Uh, that's rhetoric and not a prognosis. Uh, right now, you're listening to Mid Morning Matters with Alan Partridge. See ya. Take a cup of personality, pour in some chat... And drink up some good company. I.e. mid-morning matters with Alan Partridge. Good evening, uh, morning, afternoon. Who cares? Who gives a flying monkey? Because uh, today we're talking about things you don't see much of anymore. Uh, already we have uh, capes, tinned meat, horlicks, sparrows, hula hoops, the crisps, not the toy. Uh, hula hoops, the toy, not the crisp. Uh, swimming pools with deep ends and asbestos. Um, uh, we'll be asking, should we bring some and or all of them back? So do please text, uh, Twitter, spam, fax, page, write and or email. OK, let's, let's kick it up a gear. <clears throat> this is state-of-the-art technology. It's an electronic gauntlet linked to a computer. I'm going manual. OK. Um, <laughs> it's a combination of an iPhone and a Wii. And it's called a YI. <laughs> and... Uh, and interestingly, it was developed in Newcastle <laughs> um, by myself, Intel, and Jimmy Nail. <laughs> um, I only wear the glove on the one hand, uh, a bit like Michael Jackson, uh, except my glove will not be used for evil. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's start by having a bit of fun. If people were pies, who would have a positive filling? Let's take a look. <laughs> That's right. It's Trevor Phillips, chairman of the Commission for Racial Equality. Trevor is a very positive person. I met him two years ago at the Pride of Britain Awards, uh, where he was winning an award for being uh, least racist person or something. <laughs> and um, afterwards, after the ceremony, he'd, he'd, he'd had a couple of drinks. And Actually, I think I'll do this. Um, <laughs> That's a, that, that's a bit weird. Um, yeah, he, he'd had a couple of drinks, and Trevor made some pretty, pretty derogatory comments about the Welsh. 
I said, hey you, hey Trevor, give that award back. And he said, Alan, he said, I'm not racist. He said, but you've got to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> and without missing a beat, he said, that line is somewhere around Shropshire. <laughs> Very positive person indeed. <laughs> Who else would have a positive feeling? Let's take a look. That's right, it's my very good friend, Norfolk-based intensive farmer, Bernard Matthews. <laughs> Bernard is a very positive guy. He gets a lot of flack from the pro-chicken brigade. Um, unnecessarily so, because he really does have chicken's best interests at heart. Um, I was chatting with him about this the other week uh, at a cockfight um, <laughs> in, in his front room. <laughs> And I said, I said, Bernard, don't listen to these people. I mean, how much space does a chicken need, really? If you do give them space, they just run around like idiots. <laughs> so, you know. But he's got, he's got a great sense of humour. Um, I was at a party at his house a few weeks ago, and he said to me, he said, Alan, he said, are you a leg or a breast man? I said, do you mean chickens or ladies? <laughs> and he laughed. He laughed. <laughs> he said, but no, seriously, Alan, he said, when we get them in a confined space, he said, they make a hell of a racket. I said, do you mean chickens or ladies? <laughs> and he laughed again. Yeah. Not quite as loudly as the first time, but uh, he did laugh. Yeah. Um, and then he said, no, but seriously, Alan, he said, when they reach a certain weight, we electrocute them, slit their throats, then gut them. Uh, I said, do you mean chickens or ladies? <laughs> and he asked me to leave. <laughs> OK, if a pie had a negative filling, what would that look like? Let's take a look. That's right, it's Chief Superintendent Charles Brownlow from The Bill. <laughs> Don't know his real name. Two years ago, Brownlow, when I told Brownlow two years ago I was going to write, direct, produce and act in my own play about the life of Sir Thomas More, Brownlow said, Don't do it, Alan. You're not a good enough writer. You're not a good enough actor. You'll just look like a tit. <laughs> really, Brownlow? Well, when I put that play on tonight, there's only going to be one tit and it'll be you and you'll be a tit eating a pie. <laughs> and you know what flavour that pie will be? Humble, <laughs> humble pie. Uh, by the way, when I had acting lessons for my debut tonight, I hired the best in the business, crocodile shoe-wearing Geordie Hardman, Jimmy Nail. Um, and Jimmy, Jimmy, when he trained me, he said to me, he said, Alan, he said, I didn't fuck a boot. <laughs> and he didn't, he really didn't. <laughs> Yesterday's quick-fire phone-in uh, only yielded three calls. My mistake, I think panel beating was uh, too narrow a topic. Uh, so today we're going to open it out uh, with the question, what is the best thing? What's the best thing of all? Um, uh, we've, so far we've got uh, Sky Plus, uh, a cup of Brazil nuts, that was amusing, livestock, valid, and wet wipes. That was a, a fascinating uh, call from an elderly lady in Hempton. Let's have some more. Line two. The first smile of a newborn. Ah, who could not like that? Who could not like that, though? Uh, Herod. Yes, Herod. That's right, because he was a baby killer. He enjoyed... Yes, he killed lots of babies. He did. Uh, we don't like him. Uh, line four, Sean. Oh, it's got to be. It's got to be your radio show, Alan. <laughs> oh, you, I, don't, I have no need to... I can, you've saved me a lot of money on toilet paper now because you've already uh, done the job for me, <laughs> as, it, as, it, as it were. You're uh, arse slicker. Yeah, all right, well, obviously that's the implication, you know. Um, line six, uh, Stuart. It's sliced bread. What about sliced bread? <laughs> Sliced bread, it's the best thing, isn't it? That's what people say. They say, it's well, the best thing. Uh, yeah, but that's, bread is. Well, that's a, that's a phrase, but it's not actually the best thing, is it? Can I have a T-shirt? No, no, of course you can't. It's, that's, that's, um, that's, not, that's just a turn of phrase. Yeah, but it's, just, it's the best thing, isn't it? Because that's what people say. And they, say not, they say, the best I know, thing is I know, bread. I know they say that. I'm familiar with the phrase, but it's just a turn... It's not literally true. Then why do people say it? Of course because it's true. It's not, sliced bread is the best thing. It's the best it's, thing. It's stop bread. Keep, if you keep saying it, sure, it's not going to make it any more we all, true. We all know the phrase, we mate. We all know the phrase. <laughs> it's just an idiom. You're an idiot. No, an idiom, not an idiot. You're, you're an, an idiot. No. You're, no, you're an idiot for not knowing what idiom is. It's clearly confused you because you think I just substituted the T with, with, with an M, you stupid gim. <laughs> Uh, you, or you, you momal mwam. Oh, you go. Maybe that. Uh, you, yeah, you're, you're a complete cunm. Hmm. Well, I think you're a prick. Right, well. get rid of him. Sorry about that. Uh, I should have, I should have 
just uh, knocked him off more quickly. I wasn't quick enough. I had a dick. Shit. Right. Um, right, well, he's, he's gone now, but I'll continue to, to, to speak my mind about him. Stuart, I've got to say, I think the Clifton Suspension Bridge was built for people like you. The fact that you can drive cars across it is a bonus, so do the decent thing. And leave the keys in your car so uh, someone can shift it afterwards. And please don't don't call in saying I'm encouraging people to kill themselves. Again? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm suggesting that one person throw himself off Clifton Suspension Bridge because he is, and hopefully soon to be was, a very unpleasant individual. Uh, a bit like Jamiroquai. OK. Now, you're sitting there and you're thinking, OK, Alan, forward solution sounds pretty amazing. But we want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Well, let me introduce to you two horses whom I've rocked into forward solutions. Please clap your hooves for my two rocking horses. I'll just introduce them. Uh, Jackie and Jackie Tootle. <laughs> now, now, Jackie and Jackie Tootle. A little bit confusing. Um, presumably, um, you, you're, you're Jacqueline and you're Jack. Um, no, we're actually both christened Jackie. That's hilarious. <laughs> but to avoid confusion, uh, what I'd like to do is refer to you as woman and you, man. <laughs> now, woman, um, you were one of the first people to embark on my Forward Solutions programme, weren't you? Yes, well, um, I realised that a lot of my problems stem from my childhood. Right. My mother was very critical of me as a child, and she used to tell me I was fat. Bitch. Well, no, she had her own issues. OK, fair enough. Um, but my father wasn't around when I was growing up. All oh, right, bastard. Because he was killed in a car crash. OK, OK, not, not, not a bastard. Well, he was drunk driving. So. OK, so sort of a bastard. Well, no, he had his own issues as well. Well, well make your mind up, love. You know, you can't have it both ways. Well, my therapist says I can, actually. Yeah. 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 Go on. So, um... Yeah. That was my best therapy life, as you can imagine. Um, oh, uh, right. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, uh, sorry, I've just pressed a button here by mistake. Sorry, I'll just sort that. Keep, keep, keep going. Sorry, okay. sorry about that, i just sort um, this out. So yeah, that yeah. wasn't the best start in life. Okay. And um, then I met Jackie, who's the love of my life. Yeah. And um, as well as us both being called Jackie, uh, we both actually have an allergy to dairy, um, which is quite unusual, isn't it? Um, and, you know, we have to avoid milk yeah. and cheese and... Uh, all sorts of lovely things, um, pizza, for example. But um, if we do have any milk, it does mean that we don't get quite a bad rash. And um, at worst, it can actually get your face puff up and um, stop you from breathing. So we do really have to avoid any type of milk. And we have to limit our diet. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, our little son... <laughs> by another child and um, he did actually have quite a severe allergic reaction oh and it put him in hospital which was terrible for us. I mean, it, did it sounds well. amazing, it really does. Um, I'm outside the University of West Sussex and in their computer science department they're developing some of the most advanced robotics anywhere outside of America and China and Germany and Japan. Also Singapore. Love these guys. Electric lady. Nice. This droid, what's it capable of? That's just the coffee machine. Got it. Is this a coffee machine? No. Could be. Doesn't make coffee. So this is the unit here. It's a fully electronic torque-controlled quadruped. We foresee a lot of uses in the industrial cleaning sector as well as around the home. Yeah, it's quite a noisy little... Uh... I want to say chap, not quite sure what to call it. Her nickname is Lady. Yeah, I, I don't really do nicknames. Can you switch it off, please? I asked you to turn it off, please. Sorry, love. Oh. A 
I've got to say, I remain something of a sceptic. Call me a Luddite, I don't even have a tease made. Let alone a computerised Japanese toilet like Jonathan Ross. I've thrown a heavy towel over Alexa. Nevertheless, the nerds here have allowed me to take this robot dog home. Its name is Unit One, not Lady. First, I wanted to put it through its paces. And with four legs powered by four servo motors, it's a robot with as much bite as bark. Not the quietest droid, but with a top speed of a nifty six, it's quick enough to outrun anyone with a mobility issue. But are we ready for robots? Could you trust this face? Look at it. The idea of robotics isn't new. Aristotle wrote about automata replacing slavery in 322 BC. That's three centuries before Christ. Allow me to put that in context. But he just did. Well, and then there was Buddhist scholar Dao Xuan, who imagined metal humanoid automata that could recite sacred texts. So the appearance of being intelligent was actually just the ability to read out loud. Precisely. Yeah. Hugh Edwards. But what if doing no harm involves moral ambiguity? Take self-driving cars. What if swerving to avoid hitting someone on the road involves mounting the curb and hitting someone else? How does the robot decide whom to harm and whom to save? Could use of the word whom, but it is a dilemma. If a, a robot car was hurtling towards a pregnant woman pushing a pram, of course, it would swerve to avoid her, even if it meant hitting another pedestrian. But what if that pedestrian was a senior politician like Grant Shapps? Now you've put that robot in an impossible situation. Well, there's also the issue of automatons serving us in a range of different ways, um, some of them in perhaps more intimate ways. Do you mean sex robots? Well, yes. Yeah, that's weird, because I don't think I've thought about that before. But do you think that would be all right, then, to do that? Well, it's a question that's never been addressed. Because there could be for women, too. It's a case of adapting an existing unit. But perhaps a more complex issue is how to manage an emotional connection. You could imagine a robot one day providing the same companionship a dog might. My dog would be a hard act to follow. Yes, some people do form strong emotional attachments with their dogs. Not like me and Seldom. Is, uh, he passed on a couple of weeks ago. But I, I was actually at a fun fair. In one minute it was barking at the waltzers, the next minute he was, as I thought, asleep next to the ghost train, funnily enough. But um, no, he'd... Um, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. Ah, yeah, he's a big fella, yeah, but I tell you, he showed a damn sight more sensitivity than half the people on this planet. Well, that's the thing with these moral dilemmas. I think it's... He used to stand on his hind legs and put his paws on his shoulders and then just dance around the room. Yeah. Yeah. I miss him. He's a really, really good dog. <laughs>